Welcome back to Alliance's Heroes, where heroes in business align. To be part of our super community and find out more about Alliance's, visit www.alliances.com. Now, back to our super host, David Kogan, founder of Alliance's. Thank you again, Money Radio. I don't ever want this show to end because it has just been off the hook this morning. Incredible with heroes. We started off the show with the founder of Hotwire, president of Expedia, and CEO of TaskRabbit. We just had, to the executive producer of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. And we had the top executive for Ringley Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus. But it doesn't end there because our heroes take risks. And our next hero has done so much. Wait till you hear what he's doing now. But let me give you a little brief background on him. Philip Buchanan. Okay, just incredible things going on with Philip. He was the ex Raiders and Redskins football star, 17th overall pick in the draft, played professional football for almost 10 years. Now, I got to ask you, Philip. Bring us back to when you were drafted and what did it felt like hearing your name being called on draft day? What emotions were you feeling and what were you thinking? It was definitely a a great and great and great and exciting time because for me I've always dreamed about being drafted, particularly in the first round. And it was almost kind of shocking because I was getting phone calls in between the fifth to the 10th or 11th pick. And I was like, okay, so they're calling me. You know, I, I might be getting picked this number right here. And then all of a sudden, I didn't get picked. And so it went silent from between the 12th to the, to the 17th pick. And all I saw was my name flashing on the bottom of the screen, and that's when new money was born. And, you know, that's when I was so excited and for, you know, for, for me and my family. But it was definitely exciting. Were you jumping up and down? I mean, were you standing? I got, I mean, I got it trying to picture this. Were you sitting down? Were you crying? I wasn't crying. I was I was sitting down because there was a lot of stuff going on, you know, pretty much in my household during that time. Because, you know, a lot of stuff between what agent I picked. If I was took this agent, I would have been drafted six pick, seven pick, eight pick, or even ten pick. And then so it was a lot of emotions going on between what people thought that I should have done. So it was kinda it was kinda bumping around all over the place. But then at the end of the day I just wanted to be drafted and you know and it was definitely an honor to be drafted on the first day, which is definitely in the first round of seventeen pick. So I was happy, even though I was you know, even even though I didn't show it as much, but I was definitely happy. And not only that, you know, you played for the Houston Texans, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Detroit Lions, Washington Redskins, total of five different pro teams. What did you notice different about maybe perhaps being part of each team, or what stood out to you the most? Because, you know, each team, right, different. Uh, what maybe stood out the most? What stood out the most to me was how certain organizations ran their team and how if you hire the right people, things can be done so much better. And if you sign the right players, players will work with younger players. And sometimes, you know, when you sign the wrong players, certain players won't work with younger players. And for me, unfortunately, for me, I went to the Raiders as a bunch of superstars. And Rob Wilson, Charles Wilson, Jerry Rice, Tim Brown, that's just the name of a few, Rich Cannon. And it was a star-studded team. And, you know, for the most part, most guys, they really led by example. They weren't, they weren't really vocal leaders. You know, Tim Brown was more vocal, but I mean, but they wasn't, they, they wasn't really vocal. We didn't, we were just winning and we were just, you know, just the whole, just win baby kind of mantra and, and everything was good. But then when things started kind of the dip a little bit after when Rich Gannon got hurt, that's when you saw things weren't as always as good. But when I went to Houston, the structure wasn't good. Good owners just didn't have the, the right people in place to actually run that team. And that was a miserable time for me. Although I love the city of Houston, just the football stuff was just just horrendous. It was just bad. Um, Tampa Bay was perfect. I went to Tampa. You know, I came back to Florida. It was a great situation. I loved the coaching, Money Kiffin, uh, Raheem Morris, uh, John Gruden. The way they did things were more professionally. And that was probably the best team that I actually been around with from the way from how they ran the team, and that was probably the most fun that I had because it made sense. It made football sense. You had leaders, Derrick Brooks, Ronnie Barber. Like, they would know they, they led by example, and they were definitely vocal. We watched film together. It was a different culture culture that was built in Tampa Bay around that time. Detroit was very similar to Houston. Uh, it was just, you know, 
you're trying to make stuff happen. You know, like, you know, like I said, you have good owners, but just just didn't have the right pieces to kind of make stuff work. And Washington was a good situation. And you know, um, Shanahan, he's first class. He's he's definitely a good head coach. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you just got to make better decisions on having a stronger cash with you. And I think that's the only thing that he was missing by just trying to have um, some stronger coach with him. But overall, I mean, Washington. Tampa and, and Oakland was definitely a good experience, particularly for me because that was my first my my first appearance of playing in NFL, which was fun. So. Uh, incredible! And you could reach Philip Buchanan by going to octocanon.com. dot com. That's o c t o c a n o n dot com. And you're listening to Alliances Heroes on Money Radio AM fifteen ten and FM ninety nine point three. Are you a hero in business? Go to alliances dot com, the place where entrepreneurs line. That's e l i. A N C E S dot com. Now, I think the thing is, is that many may not know, but you are also an author. Okay, new money, a look at the dangers of sudden new wealth on young athletes. What do you mean by danger? What I mean by danger is most people don't understand is that when you get a lot of money or you say you win a lottery or say you say somebody throws a $4 million check because that's exactly what I got, I got $4 million. But I had no experience on how to handle that money, how to deal with financial advisors, how to deal with just, just deal with family. And so my book explains from money and family, money and friends, money and brokers who make you broker, and financial molesters, a.k.a. financial advisors. So I'm giving you firsthand experiences on the things that I went through. And, Dealing with the adult abusers, you know what I'm saying? Because the, the adult abusers are people that you who who you love and you trust, and they use their love and trust against you to try to get what they want to give you. Whether it's family, it could be your mom, it could be your dad, it could be your uncle, it could be anybody. And then um, and then knowing the difference between friends, historical friends, fun friends, and true friends. We need more true friends. True friends add and bring value to you, and they don't take from you. Fun friends know how to spend your money. And historical friends are what we, what we kind of get confused, and we think just because we've known them for so long that we that we're supposed to do right by them, and so that's a difference. So understand the difference between your friends. And I have a lot of more definitions. I even talk about the brokers who make you broker, and like I said, the financial molesters, and all of the you know pretty much the whole nine yards. And I also talk about bad business deals too in my book. So I talk about a lot of stuff. Incredible that you've come out with this book to help others, but you haven't stopped there. Not only are you an author, professional player. You've also led to another project. Let's talk about what this project is. And again, people can go to octocanon.com to reach Philip Buchanan. What's your other project that you're doing? I'm doing I'm doing a spinoff from my book, which is the new new money staying rich. So I'm doing new money staying rich, the board game. And uh, for more information, you can find it on Kickstarter. But uh, pretty much right now, we're not doing good on Kickstarter. So, but I'm not sad. I'm not mad or anything like that. I'm just trying to gauge. The, I'm trying to gauge the demand on Kickstarter. And so, right now, the response hasn't been good. But I'm coming out with a gaming app, and the gaming app should be available on on the iPhone. I would say probably around July 1st to July 4th. And and pretty much the board game is going to be similar. To, it'll, it'll be kind of close to what the app will be. And so. Basically, the new Money Standards board game is like you have character cards. You can be a movie star. You can be a lucky investor. You can be a musician, someone who actually inherits money, pro athlete, CEO, model, or lottery winner. And now I'm taking through all the experiences of what you will go through if you got money. Like one card that you could, that, you know, that you could possibly get is um, a reaction card, which is orange. Um, and right now, if you roll it even or odd, which you roll two dice it says, so broker who makes you broker. If it's even, you took the bait, you lose 250 k to the bank. Or odd, you got lucky this time, don't try this again, collect $1 million from the bank. And so, so it's different. So it's different reaction to what positive and negative things that can happen to you. And so everybody starts out with 200000 then then everybody rolls the dice, and whoever gets the highest, that's who goes first. And you pick your character card face down, and then you start the game. And so either you start on the orange or the green path, and then, and then if, if you're lucky, you can pay the toll to go into the platinum area where you can get compensated very well so you can win the game. So the object of the game is buying real estate, and so you can win the game and learn some of the things you go through when you have a lot of money. I love it. I love it. So make sure you go to octocanon.com, O-C-T-O-C-A-N-O-N.com. Philip Buchanan, an author, former athlete, doing so many incredible things, has a board game out because he wants to help others. 
He wants to continue to make a difference in people's lives. And this has been David Kogan with Alliances, where entrepreneurs align. We want to continue to help build the community. If you're a hero, make sure you go to alliances.com. And thank you to Glue from Loopy Docs and Design. That's loopydocs.com for being the producer at the Alliances Hero Show. She speaks geek, so make sure you check out her website. You have been listening to Alliances Heroes, where heroes in business align. Alliances is the destination for entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, inventors, leaders, celebrities, and startups. To present your superpower, visit www.alliances.com. To unmask Alliances Heroes' secret identities, be sure to tune in every Thursday at 9 a.m. right here on Money Radio 1510 and 99.3 FM.